Okay, we're here. This is John Furrier, SiliconAngle.com, and I'm here with Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org. This is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's coverage of all the tech events and conversations in tech, and we're going to bring that to you live all day today here in San Francisco. Where we're here with EMC's VSpec Launks. Dave Vellante, my co-host. Dave, how are you doing? You got in last night? Yeah, John, doing great. We were down at the uh, IBM announcement yesterday. A big week for converged infrastructure, right? We saw. We saw some other announcements from, uh, from, from HP, we saw some stuff coming out from, uh, from NetApp, we saw some stuff from IBM yesterday, and now we're here for the big announcement of the week, EMC vSpecs. Well, we're here in San Francisco to really document the changing services landscape. SiliconAngle.com has a new vertical site now, almost a year up and running called Services Angle, and we cover all the changing disruption in the services business from you know, delivering services, customer service, to web services, to app services, to infrastructure services, and Today we are going to be covering EMC's launch of their VSpec, which is an interesting new product day. We're going to drill down to it, but first we're going to talk about kind of what's going on in tech prior to getting into the live stream. We're going to have all the EMC execs on here. Um, SiliconAngle.com is the site to go to for a reference point for all tech innovation, Silicon Valley, Boston, all around the world. And uh, Dave, what a busy week it's been. So some news that's happened in tech has been interesting. It's a lot of things to talk about. First is, is obviously today uh, and yesterday, Apple was uh, attacked by the DOJ for antitrust behavior around their e-books. Um, obviously, I'm against this because obviously, look what the DOJ did to Microsoft. We've talked on theCUBE many, many times about the DOJ's behavior. Um, Apple's stock has an all-time high. People think they're going to have a trillion dollar market cap. And uh, we've predicted that they would go rise, rise, and rise. And now they're being clamped by the government. Um, at the same time, the government under Obama's leadership was trying to create startups for jobs, so I, I just don't get this kind of hamstringing Apple when they're actually creating innovation. In fact, it was Apple Computer that enabled uh, Instagram, a star startup less than two years old, to sell for a, a billion dollars. Uh, the co-founder, Kevin Systrom, made $400 million by selling an app that takes photos and shares them on the mobile social network, Dave. So, eight guys starting a billion dollar, getting a billion dollar company off the ground. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, he has did. that ever been done before? Right. I well, mean, Mark Cuban sub Mark, sub ten people. Um, we've seen some acquisitions, but not that high. Not that that they only had thirteen people technically, but really it was like eight about a couple weeks ago. Um, again, no real presence in sales, no real business, other than the fact they had thirty million people using their their product. And Mark Zuckerberg saw a little bit of himself. In, in Instagram, and I think the reason why Microsoft bought them was because they, had, they were a direct Facebook threat. Game. I mean, Facebook bought them because of direct threat, and, uh, and they, although they didn't have a lot of revenue, they had a lot of value to Facebook. So Facebook takes a competitor out of the market uh, for a, a billion dollars, which if you think about it, if it was, it was less cash, more stock, Dave, then that's going to be a good pop for their IPO. They take a competitor off the table, they get presence in mobile, and now, John, Facebook's known for buying these services and shutting them down. You think that's a, what they'll do with Instagram? No, I think they're going to bring them in as a small team. Again, it's only 13 people as of the acquisition, so Facebook will bring them in, let them run independent for a while, but ultimately give them a different hedge into the mobile space. Obviously, mobile is the only thing that really could unseat Facebook for being what dominant platform that they are. They own the web. They have a lot of mobile uses, but their mobile app really isn't that great. Um, and obviously, Pictures is the number one app on Facebook and it was a direct threat. A billion dollars when they're already kind of, quote, overvalued, depending upon how you look at it. I mean, Microsoft's, I mean, uh, Facebook's valuation is so massive. A billion dollars in paper stock, not that much money. I, mean, I agree with you. I mean, uh, uh, how many users does Facebook have? 800 million, 850 million? And about only half use the Facebook app. And you, I mean, all their users are on the mobile. So, big upside there, right? And, and the other thing about this story, Dave, that uh, was obviously obvious in our internal Silicon Angle conversations was disagreement around if this is a good deal or not. Mark Risen Hopkins and I debated this, and he wrote a blog post on his own blog, so he doesn't you know, go in rogue with his opinion, but you know, he's got a good angle on that. And you know, for people who aren't in Silicon Valley, it looks like just this frothy, gratuitous deal, and as Mark was saying, it's an insider VC hand job. So, so I think, you know, <laughs> ultimately, the, well, the, I don't believe that because there wasn't a lot of VCs in here. They only raised $7 million in financing, only a few players. Sequoia kind of came in at the last moment on a, on a huge round, but they're going to get 2X on their money. Uh, yeah, people made some money, but the big thing is the founder made $400 million. So it was more of a deal for the founder and, and less of an inside Silicon Valley baseball deal. Risen's other point was that they could have just hired a bunch of engineers and you know, replicated the the, the, the features and the service. Yeah, and of course they could, but if it fails, they lose in the eyes of Wall Street, 
They lose on the execution prowess that they have. And look at Google Plus. Google Plus has uh, been trying to duplicate Facebook and um, they're struggling, as some say. I actually think they're doing well. I think they have a different strategy. Um, and this week in the news, Google Plus redesigned their whole social network. So you know, I think Google Plus is one of those things where um, the, easy, the easy analysis for the low-end bloggers out there is to, is to compare it to Facebook. And most, most of the, like, the tech crunches of the world talk about that. Um, oh, it's a Google Plus, it's a Facebook um, clone. Google's specifically going after sequencing off Gmail and all their current assets. And I think Google Plus will be a completely different product than Facebook, and we'll see how they execute that. But clearly not knocking it out of the park. Product's not that bad, it's got traction, but it's not Facebook. Well, I know a lot of Instagram users weren't thrilled with the, uh, with the move, but if Facebook you know, keeps them as a separate service, I'll be happy because uh, I, I use the mobile app and I think it could be a lot better. And like you said, pictures is the number one use case. So, so last week, this week, uh, Mark and I were talking about the billion dollar week in tech. Big, big week it's in tech. It's been a billion What's dollar that? week. There's been three acquisitions this week of a billion dollars. Instagram, Facebook deal that we talked about, um, AOL sold their patent portfolio to Microsoft for a billion dollars, and AT&T sold their yellow pages to a financial group, AKA hedge fund or some other new instrument uh, to take that old dying business and turn it around, probably most likely in a data business for a billion dollars. So you got all three of those companies selling for a billion and Kodak is still worth zero. Yes, right? Kodak. So, so <laughs> the best line of the week was Instagram sells for a billion, Kodak, <laughs> sold for zero. Well, you know, we were having a conversation about branding earlier. Maybe Kodak should just use the brand to brand anything, like the Kodak car. Polaroid, too, right? The Polaroid brand still has some cachet, doesn't it? You remember Polaroid, John? You drive by Polaroid on, yeah. on 128 now, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a burned out building, basically. Yeah, so yeah. maybe they should just go into whatever, pianos, cars, you know, cameras. There's some, there's some other sentiment around the Instagram deal that I want to share with you, and that is, is that, you know, and I saw a line out there on the, on the Twitter sphere around, the quote was, Kodak, solves all photography problems worth z zero. Instagram wrecks all solves problems, sells for a billion. So it kind of it begs the question, what's that worth? So, so, so billion again, dollars. Billion dollar week, a lot of things going on. Also I wrote a post on Forbes, it's got a lot of traction about Hunger Games, and uh, it's more of a social angle, but basically Hunger Games, huge success, thanks to companies like This Moment, which builds the, the best social platform for YouTube and Facebook. And Hunger Games became a huge success because they applied social media in the right way. Hunger Games proved that you can execute a social media strategy without gimmicks and viral, got viral cats, and they did it well in advance, activated their car audience, and uh, huge success. Um, and the other thing, Dave, that's hot outside of the social network in our world is services. So we're seeing IT cloud, huge. HP wow. made an announcement, uh, VMware announced something with Cloud Foundry yesterday, OpenStack has having some changing of the guard uh, with Citrix leaving, and now today SolidFire stepping up. Well, I, I, and I got to put in a plug for services. We were here talking about converged infrastructure, the, the whole trend toward bringing together servers and storage and networking. And, and the whole idea behind this, John, as you know, is simplification. Right? Simplification, you would think, means less services. Well, guess what? At Wikibon, we just sized this market, and the TAM is enormous. It's a $400 billion market. And guess what the biggest component of that market is? Services. And so services are over 40% of that TAM. So despite the trend towards simplification in cloud, services is still the big nut. The other thing that happened this week, Dave, I'll share with you, is that we were at the SAP event this week where they launched their new HANA uh, database and actually came out and said, we are not a CRM company. We are not an ERP company. SAP is a database company. And came out with all their top dogs. Um, Vishal Sikka was the lead executive out there, essentially introducing the massive uptake of HANA, talking about the application business, really talking about two things, mobile, and they're talking about performance as database. So, you know, that brings up, brings up the key point that I want to chat with you about. I'm looking at our real-time analytics dashboard here, Dave, and you know, the trending items in, in the verticals of, that we're covering is analytics, open source, cloud computing, SQL, MySQL, VMware, big data, EMC, and cloud storage. I mean, this area is smoking hot. What is your take on why SAP, why IBM, why VMware, EMC, Cisco, why all these guys like OpenStack are all retooling? It seems to be like cloud washing is moving into cloud reality. What is your angle on this, real quick? Two words, land grab, right? We're, we're in a major transition. Uh, guys like Joe Tucci have talked about these, these waves. As you, had the, as you know, well know, John, you and I have been around a long time, these new waves bring trillions of dollars of opportunity, and as a result, 
people are going after it. They're going after converged infrastructure. They're going after cloud. They're going after new ways of, uh, of the, like for instance with OpenStack, you know, the Hail Mary against Amazon, and it's a land grab. Okay, we're getting ready to go to the live feed, so we're about to begin, Dave, this event that EMC's kicking off, and, and by the way, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna cover the EMC event here, v, VSpec, but we're also going to wrap around the editorial angles around how this impacts the services. We're going to go to a live stream in a few minutes of EMC's event here, and they're announcing some pretty amazing things here. Simple, efficient, flexible. This is a channel killer. This product is going to change the services business. Obviously the reseller channel, the integration business uh, around integration, it's all about margins, Dave. And, and I want to get your opinion once they announce it, to have you do a deep dive and, and dissect the announcement. But to me, I want to hear a couple things from EMC. I want to hear proof points, I want to hear specific examples of success, and I want to hear how people are going to make money. Because the channel cares about margin, and profit, and making cash and serving their customers. So let's set it up real briefly. So first of all, we're here in San Francisco, live at the Terra Gallery in downtown San Francisco for the EMC V-Specs announcement. It's a converged infrastructure announcement. Now, VCE, the joint venture between VMware, Cisco, and EMC, which is largely funded by EMC, about two-thirds, maybe even more, funded by EMC, started this off in 2009, John, with the converged infrastructure announcement around VBlock. A single block of infrastructure, we had Mike Capellas on theCUBE talking about this, single block of infrastructure that brings together Cisco UCS, EMC storage, and, uh, and Cisco servers. And that really has started to take up the market. Now Exadata also, Oracle Exadata, after the acquisition of Sun, started to bundle in Sun hardware, they bumped out HP, so Exadata and VBlock were really the two players there selling a single SKU. HP entered the market, Donatelli went to HP, brought that ethos in there, knew how important this was, and now we're seeing everybody, Dell, IBM, HP, NetApp, NetApp was also in there with FlexPod. Now, here's the thing, John. VBlock was any way you wanted it, as long as it was black, okay? It was like the Model T of converged infrastructure. The announcement today is all about choice and flexibility. More hypervisors, more choice in terms of servers, more choice in terms of, 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 of networking beyond just Cisco. So that's what today's announcement is about. And we're seeing it's a big channel. Dave, what about lock-in? Say. say it again? We want to talk about lock-in. Is there a lock-in factor here? Yeah, I think that um, all, every single vendor will tell you there is no lock-in. Quote, we won't lock you in. Quote, we, there's no, there's no lock-in here. Guess what? John, I'm on record as saying this is the mother of all lock-ins. And here's why. Customers are worried about who has pricing power. What you're finding with all these suppliers, VBlock, uh, certainly IBM yesterday said this, I uh, had a lunch with Steve Mills. Uh, you're seeing this with Exadata. They're claiming that they're not charging a premium for this integration. They're putting white glove services on this. Why? Because they clearly want to have pricing power down the road. So today, this is a caveat emptor. Today, there's no price premium down the road. I would expect there would be for integration. There okay. should be. We're going to take a commercial 30 second break just to kind of reset and get ready for the live stream from EMC. So stay tuned, we'll be right back.